everyone, I just want to take a moment to refresh verbals with you. So verbals, remember they're words that look like verbs, but they don't act like verbs. So verbals do not have a subject, verbs do. So I want you to think about this as we're going through this lesson. There are three types of verbals. Two of them are very, very easy. Gerunds and participles. A gerund is always a noun. A participle is always an adjective. It always describes a person, place, or thing. So, of course, you're familiar with the endings. The reason why some of you get confused with these is because they do carry one of the same endings, and oftentimes this ending is used a lot for participles. So I want you to think about this. Gerunds are always nouns, and usually it's a subject or a predicate nominative. Okay, which means there's a linking verb. Loving others is something we should do. There's rarely an action verb if there's a gerund. Now, sometimes there is, and I don't want to put my foot in my mouth and say something wrong. But if you see the word is or are, and there's like an ing in front of it, it's probably the subject. And it comes at, if it comes right after it, it's probably the predicate nominative. So knowing the placement in the sentence can help out with that. But um, the biggest thing there is Ask yourself, what is it doing in the sentence? Don't just see the ing and guess if it's a participle or, an a, or a gerund. What is it doing in the sentence? Well, find the verb, right? It might be, if it's the subject, you automatically know it's a gerund because adjectives are not subjects, right? So um, just be meticulous when you're looking at that stuff. Next, a participle. Of course, we know the dentating and we know that it's an adjective. You should know that, but take a look at it. Oftentimes, these participles come right at the beginning of the sentence with a comma after them. Playing in the street, the boy almost got hit by a car. So playing in the street is describing the boy. Which boy? Well, the one playing in the street, like a not smart person, okay? Playing in the street, the boy almost got hit by a car. Playing with my phone, I ran into the wall. Um, running down the sidewalk, I saw a dog, like whatever. But remember when they come at the beginning, they have to modify the, nap, the subject. Remember looking through the window, the sunset was beautiful. The sunset wasn't looking through the window, so it needs to be reworded like, looking through the window, I saw a beautiful sunset. Make sure if you see an ing and then a comma after it at the beginning, that is a participle. And it, and it talks about the subject. So that should help you be able to check participles. And then oftentimes participles are also um, a positives. The pizza, burnt to a crisp, tasted horrible. Okay, burnt to a crisp comes right after pizza and it also has that T that should be very um, telling that it's a participle. So oftentimes participles come right at the beginning with a comma and they modify the subject or they come right after as in a positive. So that's the easy way to find participles. And then infinitives is two plus a verb. Some of you are um, marking prep phrases as infinitives because they have two, like to the mall, um, to the beach, to the lunch table, whatever, okay? But it needs to be two plus a verb, to love God, to clean the floor, to wipe the board, to whatever. It needs to be a verb after it, not an article. It's just that's the difference between a prep phrase and an inf infinitive phrase, excuse me. To love God is my goal. Okay, so obviously that's the subject there. But infinitives can be nouns, adjective, or adverbs, and that's where it can get crazy. But at least you can tell it's an infinitive because the two and the verb right after it. So hopefully that clears things up. I made a little worksheet for you and um don't be alarmed if it says something's wrong. Obviously, the computer can't grade your sentences. I have to go through them after. So that is why your grade looks bad right away. Just wait till I can go through everything, and then I can leave comments and tell you if you need to fix sentences. Okay, thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a good day.